Jersey Baseball Show. Today, we've got one of the top two-way, two-sport, multi-purpose uh, athletes in the state with us. Uh, Chad Falcon is our guest, the uh, St. Joseph's uh, regional first baseman slash pitcher slash 190-pound uh, wrestler, um, St. John's uh, verbal commit, and uh, certainly a, a great story for us. So we welcome Chad to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Great to be here. How's it feel to be on the on the field with the with the guys getting some work in? It was great. It was a beautiful day outside. Um, got a bunch of new guys. Uh, younger guys are going to have to step up this year, but everyone's going to have to step up to the plate. And I'm confident in our guys this year. So, so Chad, your your situation is kind of unique in that you are transferring in this year as your your junior year. Um, you know, missed out on the, the being part of the team, you know, with the, the championship run last year, but, you know, certainly a, a chance to kind of acclimate yourself quickly uh, to the team. These captain's practices have got to be really important to just kind of get to, not just to get to know everybody, but get to kind of communicate with everybody on the, on the baseball set. Definitely. I mean, get, communication is key on the field, even off the field. Um, I'm a big believer of, I would say like team, team bonding, all that stuff. Even in other sports like wrestling, we would have team bonding and it's like basically single man sport. So I'm really big on team bonding, team communication, because especially in baseball, it's a, not a one man sport. It's always nine guys on the field. The bench guys always got to be helping each other out. And I just want to go in there and just be the best team player I can be. So St. Joe's, obviously a lot of shoes to fill. You'll be filling a couple of them coming in yourself, but let's, uh, you know, give you a chance to talk up some of your guys um, that were a part of the the magical run last year. And, uh, you know, that that are, you know, I think probably if you ask a lot of people, they're going to be sleeping on St. Joe's a little bit this mm -hmm. year. But there still is an awful lot of talent left. And that would that would probably be a big mistake. Definitely. Um, I, We got a bunch of uncommitted guys who are very good. We have our two other commits, uh, FIU commit Nick Martinez and Coppin State commit Angel Cologne, who are uh, – Nick's a great bat, 2A, up to 92 on the bump. And then Angel's a middle infielder, low 80s on the bump, can kind of pitch a little bit when he can, really good curveball. And then we got Julian Rondon, kind of reminds me of myself, but plays more outfield and pitches. Lefty, low 80s on the mound, really good curveball. We have Frank Panacidi. Uh, another middle infielder, super athletic. Um, we have another junior, Felix Gonzalez, who's a really good catcher behind the plate, great receiver, and can definitely swing it. And then we have two good, very good pitchers. We have Casey Knuckles, who's definitely going to be a sleeper this year. And we also have Joe Stern, who's very good lefty on the bump, too. Yeah, so you've got to be at the top of your game, obviously, with uh... – you know, Seton Hall Prep with Don Bosco, mm -hmm. with uh, with Bergen Catholic. You know, it's a loaded, I say crazy loaded bracket that you have, but it sounds like you guys are, uh, you know, like I said, just wait if people are sleeping on you. That's that's going to mm -hmm. be a mistake. Definitely. So so your story is uh, unique in, in the sense that, you know, not a lot of guys who are junior year who are high level D one commits and, and, you know, St. John's congratulations on that. And I think Thank maybe you. we should start there. Um, tell us about the story on, on getting, you know, the lowdown on, on how you ended up going to St. John's. So I started talk, I started talking to them last year around February. I started talking to coach Dan Bethea, the hitting coach. Yep. And then we were consistently talking throughout the spring and then we had a team camp there, um, I would say sometime around late June. And I ended up doing pretty well there. And then consistently talking on the phone, they ended up coming down to watch me play at the WWBA. And that was where the pitching coach saw me first play. Um, I ended up doing really well down there. I, rem I remember I got a text with a group chat between me, my dad, and Coach Ferber, and he says it's a screenshot of Coach Brown saying, "I love Falcon," and that that like warmed my heart up so much. It was great. Coach Brown is a great pitcher himself. It from um, you know, so to so to get that, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. got a, a a pretty unique game yourself, right? Power from the left side at the plate and some funk on the 
from the left side on the on the mound, right? Mm -hmm. um, what uh, you know, from there it was pretty much St. John's was was kind of it, right? Definitely. I mean, I think it's a great fish for me. I'm super excited to get down there. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. Uh, and and you know, playing the Big East, so you'll be playing high level baseball and all. Also, at the same time, you know, a lot of teams that are kind of within driving distance for uh, mm -hmm. for for your parents to be able to come see you play too. Mm -hmm. It's great. My dad works in Brooklyn, so he's always able to come visit whenever he wants. I'm only about an hour, hour and a half from the city, which is great. Yeah, it's a, it's a awesome uh, facilities, great field. It's a, mm -hmm. you know obviously one of the traditional uh, great programs in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So, so you've got you were kind of in a unique situation in that you know guys who have made that high level commitment, you know usually by junior year have kind of put their focus into one sport. You know, kind of the the days of the high level multi sport mm -hmm. athletes are are gone. And you were big into wrestling. You were saying before, you know, before you got to high school, mm -hmm. um, took COVID year off. You know probably we're going to take off, you know, this year too, and really focus on, on growing as a baseball player, but, you know, take us from there. Tell us what happened. Um, so I'm actually in theology class and I was, I was kind of missing wrestling a little bit. I would go wrestle around with my brother-in-law who used to wrestle a lot. And so I'm in theology class and we're just talking, I was talking to some of the wrestlers about the wrestling team and they're like, we'll be pretty good. We're just missing a 190 right now. And I'm like, you guys have a varsity spot. I would love to wrestle. And they're like, talk to the coach. I texted the coach. He's like, come along. I was like, perfect. And just started from there. So, so, I mean, it's, you know, just kind of the accidental fill in almost, but you mm -hmm. know, to, to say that you were a fill in and just kind of a placeholder and keep from losing six points every time at one ninety was, mm -hmm. would be way off. I mean, first of all, that's a, a monster weight class. It definitely but, was um what was that like because obviously you're trying to get you know gain some size for for baseball and be in the you know d1 kind of position there mm -hmm. but you got to cut a little bit for for wrestling was it was it not too bad was it you know did it or did it force you to get into like your best shape um i would say so i started the season at like 195 and honestly the best thing i had to do was just clean up my diet wrestling the amount of sweat you build off and it's probably the best exercise out there. Yeah. Um, so managing yeah. the weight wasn't a problem. It was to the point where I could eat breakfast before weighing. So that was great. I was actually never able to do that before. Yeah, no, you're exactly. You're, you're up where you needed to be. Um, mm -hmm. And, and wrestling wise, I guess, first of all, the team success was, was certainly, it wasn't just, you've got a varsity team. It's, you know, you're, you're walking right into one of the top, programs in in new jersey this year definitely um your season itself did you uh you know made it to regions finishing in the top five you know in in regions like i said just obviously just mm -hmm. missing states but you know certainly a great year did you kind of do better than you thought did you you know well my freshman year i actually only i got eliminated in the first round of district so i definitely think i did better that I was freshman year. Um, I would say a big help was my wrestling partners, the three seed in states, and my other wrestling partner was heavyweight Jimmy Mullen. So I like I would actually my other heavyweight was is right now the number six seed in states. So my partners were pretty good. You had no choice but to to get <laughs> good really fast, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's that's awesome. It's uh, what can you take out of that? this season you know that that you can bring over to to not just you know your st joe's team this year but to help you out as a as a d1 athlete because you're obviously going to have challenges along the way um i would say the number one thing would be time management it would be from practice would start at school would end at two practice would start at three it would end at five i would go home i would eat i would go to the gym from seven to eight thirty eight forty five it's about an hour half hour drive home be getting home at 9.30, 9.45, and probably do about an hour of homework and studying. So time management was definitely key, making sure I'm not spending too much time on TikTok or Instagram. Yeah, yeah, you got no choice. Either that or you'd be, uh, you, you never get done anything. Exactly. 
So you got the life of the D1 athlete already. Mm -hmm. um, and got your first uh, endorsement deal out of it, right? Yeah, it was great. Um, so we're going to give you some time to shout them out, right? Well, first of all, explain what happened, but also let's uh, let's get you, you know, let them get their money's worth here. Yeah. Um. So I was with my friend Jimmy Mullen, who he was he was the first person to start it up, and I asked him if he can get me on with them. He he said I got you. He ended up texting them for me, and they're like, Yeah, we'd love to. They didn't have any baseball players at the time doing it, so I thought it'd be a pretty cool thing to do. Um, eat clean, bro. It's a great food company. Um, all the meals are freshly made. It's out in Freehold, New Jersey. They do uh, shipping, one day shipping. You pick out the meals. Um, in boxes of six eight, 10, or 16. The meals are anywhere between 12 and $15. And all the meals are high quality, nothing unhealthy there. If you're bulking, there's 800 calorie meals. If you're cutting, there's 500 calorie meals. There's vegan, uh, gluten-free. They basically have everything there. So it's great. And what do we have to do to get you credit? Um... Don't use that. Oh, I end up using my code. code or something, right? Yeah, we got my code Falcon Eleven at checkout. You get ten percent off. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we got to get you some credit for this too. Otherwise, uh, definitely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's so you you know you ended up wrestling. You ended up getting an endorsement deal from wrestling. You end up almost mm -hmm. making states and uh, getting in great shape to to hit bombs and 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 throw some gas this year for state mm -hmm. trips. I guess we're, we'll have to look at that as a, as a good thing in total. Definitely. Um, favorite team? Favorite Yankee fan. You, I'm sorry? I'm a Yankee fan. Uh, per, for since birth? Since birth. My dad's always been a Yankee fan since birth. If, if there is a season this year, right? If the, yeah, I know. It's crazy. Favorite favorite Yankee of your uh, generation, then of your your Ooh. fandom. Ah, uh, that's a good one. I was a big fan of Tanaka when I was a kid. Okay, I does love his windup. Does that mean you like pitching more than you like hitting, or is that just? <laughs> Ooh, I would say I think I'm a be I'm a better hitter, but I, I for some reason I enjoy pitching more. Because you start with the ball and you're in control, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, pitching is right. You guaranteed to touch the ball every every pitch. Mm -hmm. Um, favorite moment your career as a baseball player? Oh, this is a so. It was I would I was 15 years old. We were down in a Staten Island Perfect Game tournament. This was one of my third tournaments with Coach Ferber. We were playing this really good team. It was the 22 PRD team. They were loaded with like Rutgers commits, Duke commits, any all big time guys from South Jersey. We ended up, we were down five nothing in the fourth inning, beginning of the game. And then we were probably, we were like kind of close to getting mercy. We ended up making a huge comeback. We were facing a stud pitcher. I think he's at Yale right now. We ended up tying the game up five five. I ended up going into pitch, I ended up getting blasted. 9-5. Now it's a uh it is the bottom of the seventh. We come back. It's now it's nine nine. We have bases loaded, one out, and Ferber called me over and he goes, There's a tough lefty on the mound, AJ Grassi do commit. I know you've heard of him. Very good pitcher, very great hitter too. I remember so Ferber comes up to me and goes, You got one swing and then you're bunting. And so I, I, in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm swinging at the first pitch no matter what because I know I'm going to get a fastball. Took the biggest swing I took and ended up walking it off. It felt great. Two-way versus a two-way there with yep. uh, you against AJ, right? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, uh, I'm sure it's something you talked about with St. John's, getting the opportunity to do that was uh, something that would be uh, – was that a necessity at this point? I wouldn't say necessity, but it's definitely helped me. Where it helped me recruiting wise, being able to do both. It made me just versatile because I can honestly do anything a lefty can play. Um, so it made recruiting easy easier for me because if a coach said I like you as a hitter, perfect. If you like me as a pitcher, great. Didn't really matter as long as I get in the field. And that's right. At this point, is St. John's going to give you the chance to do both, or they want you more for one or the other? Right now, they're going to give me the chance to do both. I could see – they said they seen me, 
like my freshman year is a nice bullpen guy. The lefty fills up the zone. Um, so I could definitely see myself throwing in like the sixth, seventh inning, middle relief guy. I have to play in a few innings at first base or in the outfield. Be the next Alex Barker down at Monmouth getting some mm-hmm. uh, pitching in and, and, and hitting absolute bombs every game, it seems like. Yep. Um, you like the two-way life then? I love it. It's great. <laughs> So I'm guessing you don't sit very well on the bench. If uh, <laughs> <laughs> got to be part of the action somehow, right? I love to be part of it. It's great because if I if I have a bad game hitting and I pitch well, or if I don't pitch well and I hit well, I'm still happy. As long as I get somewhere to help the team win. Yeah, I mean that's and that's that's a good kind of point you brought up because like when when guys are young, you know, coaches really focus on not taking one thing you know if you have a bad at bat not mm-hmm. taking it out to the field with you or or vice versa you make an error you know kind of in your head when you come up to bat you really have to compartment you know kind of compartmentalize those things when you're when you're doing both has that always been easy for you or has that been a, a challenge and something you've had to learn to do well i've always like lived by the mentality of there's no point in being angry because it's not going to change anything like you can't change the past. You can only live in the present. So there's no point in being angry. I kind of think that with everything. You know, if yeah. I like waste my money on something stupid, I'll be like, oh, oh well, I well, can't really do anything about it now. It's right. It's it's really hard to change the past, right? The only mm-hmm. thing you can do is change the future by the way you are in the present. Exactly. Um, if you get control of the uh, the pregame music for whatever reason, whether it's your start mm-hmm. day or whether it's your, uh, you know, you're in the lineup, what kind of music are we listening to? A lot of it depends on the type of mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll jam country music. Sometimes it'll be girls pop music with Katy Perry. Sometimes <laughs> it'll be some old school music with like Three Days Grace or Drowning Pool. I, I kind of like everything. That is a, it's about as wide a range as you can get that you just mm-hmm. gave us there. Yeah. <laughs> so as long as, as long as you think it's good, you don't care what kind of music it is. is what exactly. Mm-hmm. It's really Katy Perry all the time, isn't it? I love Katy Perry. <laughs> you don't sing too, do you? No, I can't sing. All right. Only, if nobody, else, only if nobody else is in the car. Right? Yeah. If no one else is watching, uh, I'll sing. <laughs> um. If you could be D1 in any other sport, I guess you'd say wrestling, but if we take either of those two away, what would you want to be D1 in? Ooh, I would say any other sport. I like, I would say volleyball. Volleyball seems so much fun. Fits your personality or just? I, I just like playing it. I would always play it in gym class and it was so much fun. So you gotta, you gotta, we gotta be get you a, a school that that either has volleyball or lets you play it somewhere in the uh, yeah. <laughs> um, one thing we don't know about Chad Falcon. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Let's go with my favorite food, and it's a I love breakfast food. Love breakfast food, pancakes or. I would say my favorite food is pancakes. All right. Favorite kind of pancakes? I hop a Cinestack pancakes. So you had a quick answer to that. So that means that's that's like not just it's like go to. You are sure. I was gonna say that's that's been mm-hmm. that's been ordered before once or twice or 30 or 40 or 50 times. More like 30 to 40, 50 times. <laughs> that that couldn't that isn't like your pregame meal choice on like early games, is it? Oh, it can't be. No, my stomach won't take that. <laughs> what is your pregame meal choice? Mm, I like to eat a complete cookie and a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. I'm very superstitious, so I have to make sure it's the same. I was going to say, that seemed awful specific. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one part, since you mentioned that, one part of your pregame routine, other than that, that, that you wouldn't, you can't change? I have to put my left sock on before my right sock. And I always have to take a shower before a game. Um, how did you figure out that you had, I mean, I guess the first time you did that, you did well? 
Yeah. I was going to say, hey, yeah, well, that's, that's good. And obviously you've, you've backed it up. So there's no reason to change now. Definitely. Um, one piece of advice or one thing that you've gotten along the way, a quote, something like that, that you try to make sure that you're, you know, following that you, you know, made a big part of your, uh, you know, kind of your personality. Smile and have fun. Excellent. Keep it as simple as possible. I was when, say, when, when too many things get in your brain, it's not no bueno. No, no, no. Keep the keep it keep it sunny. Keep it simple mm -hmm. up there. You know exactly. Um, what are you looking forward to most this year? Competing. Love to compete in any sport. It could be I could be playing Monopoly with my parents. I want to win. Is that something you remember from like your youngest possible age? You've always been that way. I've always. There'd be times me and my family were very competitive when it comes to board games. <laughs> what is the number number one board game then? Oh, we would um Parcheesi or this game called Catan, which is sort of like Monopoly. Better version of it somehow, or I I think so. It's a lot quicker moving. So stay away from the Falcon family when they're playing board games because who knows, Definitely. right? <laughs> well, we appreciate the time, Chad. Certainly, uh, you know, one of our um, favorite stories, favorite, uh, you know, well-rounded multi-sport athletes. Like I said, there aren't enough of them anymore, but, uh, you know, the lessons you get from doing that obviously pay off. And we are uh, we are super excited to see what you do at St. Joe's this year. And you know, obviously looking forward to seeing you, following you through there and, and, and into St. John's. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Although we know you got another couple of years of high school still. Yep. Chad Falcon, 2023 graduate. So junior class, St. Joseph's regional. Um, hoping to uh, help the, the defending state champs get back to there this year. Um, again, uh, we appreciate the time and hope to see everybody out at the field.